name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Someone that follows the church, if someone were to come and pray a liturgy every day of the year, this is probably the most prayed gospel of the year because, as I've explained before, the gospels of the days of the week are based on the saints of the day. And this and another gospel are used when the saint of the day is a martyr. And because our church is the church of the martyrs throughout generations, we pray this gospel a lot, and we see it a lot. Even here on Saturdays, we hear it a lot. And it's... And it's a gospel that means a lot to us still to this day. It's not a gospel that a prophecy that was already fulfilled. It's something that we need even to this day and it strengthens us. The most important for us is the verse, but it will turn out for you to be an occasion for testimony. And how true is that when we see the relatives of the martyrs in the past couple of months testifying on behalf of the Lord as if they are truly filled with the Holy Spirit. A little girl saying things that old men and women would never even begin to say. We see that that word truly is fulfilled then when the Lord says that he will use this as an occasion for testimony where the people did not have to think beforehand what they will say, because the Lord and the Holy Spirit will speak through them. We here have to appreciate that we are also part of this same fellowship. This, we are part of this same family, the family of the abused and persecuted and martyred are like us, the same, one and the same. We feel... a a sense of safety here maybe, but we're persecuted in other ways. The family is persecuted, the, the religion is persecuted, the church is persecuted, and everything that we do, sometimes one might almost, far be it from all of you, but one might almost feel ashamed as if there's something wrong for us to follow our religion and do the things that we want to do, to fast, to pray, to be honest, to be forgiving, to be loving, to be compassionate, to show empathy. Those things are slowly drifting away from the world, but we must stay in them. So we are also facing a persecution that's even more dangerous because a sword or a gun or a bomb are obvious. We know that those are dangerous and bad and can kill us. But what isn't so obvious sometimes is the way that we walk and what we are supposed to do. For instance, going to work and someone asking us to do something dishonest. Sometimes it's not so clear what we should do. Sometimes we feel I have to do whatever my boss or my coworker or whoever says or else I'll be in trouble at work and I'm raising a family, so what, what am I supposed to do? That is easier or that is harder to deal with than a sword perhaps because the danger of it is that it's hidden, it's mysterious, it's hard, we don't know what to do. Sometimes in school, for instance, we may find that the people around us are doing certain actions or saying certain words or being a certain way, and we find that we won't be accepted if we don't act that way or say those words or do those things. It's hard. But that is the persecution that you face till this day. The answer is to leave it up into the hands of our Father in heaven, and to trust in Him and say, Lord, you told me not to do this, so I'm not going to do this. Or you told me to be honest, so I will be honest. But save me and help me. Just like the martyrs in the past did and the martyrs of the current did when they faced a strong persecution, an outward persecution, persecution against their bodies. What else did they do but call out to the Lord and ask for His grace and His help? So you too... Far be it from all of us that we face a, a physical persecution. 
Hopefully that the Lord keeps us all safe and in his bosom. But for sure you face a spiritual persecution on a daily basis. The same answer applies. You stand and you say to the Lord, Lord, I'm facing this very difficult persecution. It's very heavy. It's very hard. It's very tricky. Help me. Be with me. Save me. And the Lord will help you. And you will see his hand in your life. Just like the martyrs did. As you saw in, in the martyr of this day. She asked the Lord for help and he helped her. He gave her courage. He gave her strength. And he encouraged the martyrs at the time and he said, go, why are you standing here? Go and get your crown. And so we take sometimes the persecution that we face physically and also the persecution that we face of our spiritual life. We take it as a chance to show the Lord that we are willing and able to deal with the persecution for him. Not because we're imagining that there's something better that's going to happen to us if we do this, but because for the one reason that he took it first, before he asked you to lay down your life for him, he laid down his life for you. Before he asked you to follow him, he did everything that his Father in heaven asked him to do. So we follow a Lord that's, that's willing to go out first, to be the first in the battle, to be the first one to take the sword for us. So that's what strengthens us, that this same Lord who died for us and rose from the dead will also raise us up from the dead. Whether we die spiritually, hopefully not, or we die physically, also hopefully not, we know that in the end He will raise us. However, we have control of our spiritual life so that we keep it safe and we keep it holy and we keep it pure. May the Lord continue to offer to you the gifts that you need to keep your spiritual life holy, precious, and pure before the Lord. And glory be to God.